Hi everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to suction a trick. So let's go to the lab. Wash our hands. Provide patient privacy. We've washed our hands, we've provided privacy, and we've identified our patient using name and date of birth. Now we're going to suction their trach. So the supplies for this one are a little bottle of normal saline, and then a trach suction catheter kit. This contains all the things we need, which are our gloves, our suction device, and then like a little box. So let me open it. And we always open away because we do have to be sterile with this. So first, let's grab our little box because the little box doesn't have to be sterile. I'm only touching the outside of the box so it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to put my normal saline in the box. Now I need to be sterile. So I'm gonna flip this eh, without trying to contaminate anything so I can get my gloves on. This kit only comes with one glove. Um, you'll see that sometimes it's one glove, sometimes it's two gloves. Um, but that's okay, because now you can remember that the one with the glove needs to be sterile. So our non-sterile hand, so our non-gloved hand in this instance, so we're gonna touch everything else. So we can take this paper part off. We can get rid of this bit. We can move this bit. Now what we need to do is hook up our suction device that came in our kit to the suction that's at the bedside um, or attached to the wall, depending on where you're doing care. If you're doing this in a nursing home, it might be on a little bedside table. If you're doing this in the hospital, it's definitely gonna be on the wall. So what you need to do is take this and kind of curl it up in your hand. And then you see how I have this little bit here sticking out? So now we have it coiled up. We're gonna plug this part into our suction. And the principles of sterility still um, apply here. So for example, this is contaminated, right? So about an inch out of this tubing is also considered contaminated and not sterile. So what we're going to do is we're going to temporarily remove our patient's oxygen using our dirty hand. And now our hand isn't dirty because we provided hygiene, it's just not sterile. That's why I called it that. So moving the trach collar off to the side, we can hold it in this hand and then we're going to insert it with our sterile hand. When it comes to doing suctioning, you can do it with or without the inner cannula in, it doesn't matter, okay? So when we go in, we wanna have thumbs up. We're not gonna be pressing on this because when we're pressing on this, this is what's providing the suction, okay? And when we're doing this, we're kind of temporarily like choking our patient in a way, if you wanna think about it that way. So of course, we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna insert it, thumbs up. And then how far do we insert it? Insert it until they start to cough. That's how you know you're in the right spot. So insert it, they start to cough. Then you're going to take your non-dominant hand and apply your thumb and then remove like that. And you see how I did that like with a little wrist motion instead of like pulling it straight out? Here's what happens if I pull it straight out. See what I did there? I hit the gown, I hit the trach collar, I made a big mess, now I'm not sterile anymore. So it's very important that when you're taking it out, you wanna do like a little wiggle wrist motion. That way you're not accidentally hitting the patient, hitting their gown, something like that, and they're not sterile anymore. So in continuous suctioning, your finger is down the entire time you remove. In intermittent suctioning, it's like this. So let me show you that. So thumbs up to go in. And then when we come out, Okay, so 
just a little thing. How do you know if it's going to be continuous or intermittent? It should say in the provider's order whether they want this patient continuously suctioned or intermittently suctioned. So we're trying to keep this sterile. Is this a one-time use thing? Yes, technically, this is a one-time use thing. Once we're done, we get rid of it. But we can go down a total of three times in one suctioning session. You don't want to exceed that, right? Because this is a lot for the patient. Just the work of breathing is taking a lot out of them. So we don't want to overwhelm them. We don't want to, you know, get them upset or make them feel fatigued. So once it's been your third time, now you can get rid of it, you're done. What about our little box of normal saline? What was that for? So this was only needed sometimes. If they have like big, thick secretions that you want to help break up, or if you get a lot stuck here in the tubing when you're suctioning, um, it makes the tubing um, not work as well. So what you want to do is put it in the box and kind of suck up a little bit and it kind of cleans out the tubing. We will never ever instill any of this normal saline into the patient's trach. That's not what we're doing. We're not putting this in their body. This is just used to clean this tube. So we hope you found this video helpful. Any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.